She became a star, a star all in the night, and he became a thundercloud and muffled her out of sight. Hello, 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 ye coal blacksmith, ye have done me no harm. Let's hope it stays like that. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna edit this into a vlog, I like to splice it in. And I'd just like to say, I think on the last vlog I did, I said that uh, Richard Dunn had written the Giza power plant. And of course, it's Chris Dunn. So I'd just like to put that right. Okay. Hmm, sounds good to me. So, um, yeah. The Big Bang, where it all began for you globe believers. Do you really believe that? Do you really believe that nothing suddenly became something, what they call a singularity, and then exploded to give us all we see? And in your opinions, you globe believers, it's not just this realm that we're on, or this planet in your minds, but all the rest of them as well. So nothing and you think the universe and all the infinite number of planets and shit that came out of mm, something I couldn't see. So you believe that for, for a start. So there, there's the first axiom is bollocks. You could never prove that that happened. And how? Wh why would you want to? Because it's like it's like trying to prove the impossible, which it is. So for a start off, you're wrong. Now, secondly, during the explosion, if you've ever studied explosions, and I've only looked at them, I must admit, not in a vacuum. <laughs> but if there were, if this explosion happened in a vacuum, which was it there before? In your twisted minds, you don't know. But let's assume it was. Because in your minds, that, that, that's what's there now. So, okay, there's a vacuum in your mind. <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. But let's fill that vacuum with some common sense. So, explosion in a vacuum. Now, if that were true, then there is no resistance in a vacuum. There's no friction. There's nothing to slow that vacuum down. Now, one famous, um, ooh, let's call him a Freemason, said that it was actually speeding up. The particles from the initial explosion you call the Big Bang is still expanding. Not only that, it's actually speeding up. So it's getting faster. Now, I don't know how that will, would work, really, but I know in a vacuum, there'd be no resistance. Therefore, it certainly wouldn't slow down. Technically. So, how the fuck did all the planets, stars, and etc. form if nothing is slowing down? You don't know because it's bollocks. I, c I can't begin to even make that work. If I was a heliocentric religious disciple, I still couldn't make that work. Just like if I believed in the Christian God or the Muslim God or whatever God. There are so many holes in the story 
you know, that don't actually work in reality, that I would have to say, mm -mm, no, I can't believe that bullshit anymore. I have to face reality. There comes a time in your life when, I hope anyway, that you must put away childish Lego or whatever. I would still play with Lego, actually, if I had some. But um, you'd, you have to put away the nonsense, is what I'm trying to say. And get a grip, a firm grip on reality. So if you go outside, you can't see the curvature of the earth. Now, they will tell you, you know, Brian Cox and the like, your high priests of nonsense would tell you that you can't even see it in an aeroplane at um, 60,000 feet or whatever they go up to. They actually go to five or eight miles, I think, um, airliners. And you can't see it from that distance, from that height. Yet, if you stand on a beach, you can only see 2.9 miles ahead of you on the top of the sea, on the horizon of the ocean or the sea, the water. Yet, if you looked left and right, where's the curve? It don't make sense. So, um... I would forget all that nonsense, all that bullshit, all those theories, such as the theory of gravity. And no, no, don't tell me I don't know what the word theory means, because I do, scientifically. And if it were proven, then it wouldn't be called theory. Now, you can fuck off. So... <clears throat> You can't base your reality on theory. That just isn't right. That's a, a might be or a fantasy world or some shit that somebody's made up. Not you. Somebody's told you. That ain't right either. Because um, I was, I said this got hung up with this, all this great stuff that Antonio was doing. I saw that pop on my YouTube and I thought six hours. Yeah, I know, Mike. But I thought, you know, we'll yeah. watching. Yeah, you want to dip in and out of it because it is just yeah. brilliant. It's really good. It really is. I mean, you, could, it, a globe earther could sit and watch that for six hours, and if you're still a globe earther after that, um, you, 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 you don't have a brain. You have not yeah. got a mind, a thinking mind. You really haven't. It's been raining quite a bit recently, which is good for me. Um, I can't really tell you why at the moment, but I need to test a few things, you see, and I need lots of rain to do that, so I'm getting some rain, but there's nowhere near enough yet. Um, and I was listening to the radio, as I often do, and it was some... Uh, oh yes, that's what it's called, uh, a Radio 4 programme called Costing the Earth. And... That's the BBC all over, isn't it? I don't know how much money they get every year, but um, it costs a lot to run the BBC. And all they do is um, give us propaganda. Not much else, really. And so during this programme called Costing the Earth, there was a bunch of <clears throat> scientists going to the North Pole in an icebreaker. So, um, and they were going there to to test some bollocks, some some utter nonsense um, bullshit. And when they'd got to the North Pole. Which, of course, they didn't. They didn't go there. But I remember one of them remarking, now this is a scientist, and he said this, and he, if you've got BBC iPlayer or something, go and have a listen for yourself. 
costing the earth i think it was last week i can't tell you when but the, you, you'd only have to listen to two of them and i'm sure in the description they would tell you which one it is when they went to the north pole supposedly and one of the scientists said oh, we're on the north pole and this is where the earth spins the fastest and it's a good job i wasn't drinking or eating anything because i would have probably choked now he is supposed to be knowledgeable would you say intelligent maybe even and he says this is where the earth is spinning fastest see <clears throat> i would say say a propeller on a an aeroplane shall we say let's just call it a spitfire because we're all familiar with them now if you put your finger on the center of the propeller the bit in the middle which is called maybe the hub i don't know you put in there to your finger as it was spinning it was just about to maybe start going down the airfield and take off so it's you know revving up put your finger in this the hub as opposed to the outside of the revolving propellers i wonder now i wonder what conclusion you would come to as to which was moving the quickest and this is who the heliocentric disciples that's where they get their information from programs like this um costing the earth from on radio radio 4 bbc television programs they're all the same they're all full of shit and it really is about time you realize this you see when i say um do your research go and find out it for yourself i don't mean listen to radio for science programs or any programs at all on the radio or the television i mean go out and find out for yourself first thing step out the door of your house or shed and just quietly stand and imagine the earth spinning now and then try and feel that spin now see today there's no wind at all not a breath of wind yesterday it was similar the day before we had 40 50 miles an hour winds now <clears throat> if the earth was spinning we'd have the probably the same kind of strength of wind every day and i tell you it'd be a lot more than 40 or 50 miles an hour or zero like it is today but the atmosphere moves around with the earth <clears throat> bullshit that is just nonsense try and do it with anything and you can't you can't make the atmosphere spin round with an object it's that is just like saying i'm at the north pole where where the earth turns fastest and yet he could go from the north pole to the equator where it does actually spin the fastest and not feel the difference <laughs> so that's that's a good way to tell it's utter bullshit um conspiracy cats is a very nice person he's blocked me now from commenting now all i was trying to do was tell him the uh, the error of his ways i wasn't using bad language you know 
because I'm aware that some comments get blocked if you do use the F word or, or you know, whatever. And so I was careful not to. And um, he replied and told me, um, for reasons I don't understand, I am going to be blocked. <laughs> so I can't understand his reasons, you know. So I, you know, I don't understand that. Dear, dear, dear. Conspiracy cats. You are... You're hardly worth mentioning, really, but you are an overinflated um, fantasist, and you do quite a bit of damage in holding back the truth that's bursting out, and how foolish you will look when you have to retract all the bullshit. So um, anyway, I will buy that telly for 300 quid. Just, um, you know, tip me the wink and I'll get the cash to you somehow. Well, we'll ex I'll come to see you and we'll, you know, and I won't speak about your bullshit. I just want the guitar. See ya.